Hello, Melanie. How are you? Can we talk for a minute? Oh, hi, Colleen. Yeah, sure. Is everything okay? Everything is fine, but I want to talk about my Arnold. Listen, I have a really big favor that I want to ask you. Your son, Arnold? Sure, what is it? As a mother, I don't play favorites, so it pains me so much to say this. He's just not pulling his weight in my house. He's already a full-grown man, but he's unemployed. There's nothing left that I can say to him. He's turning more and more into the black sheep of this family, don't you think? Well, I wouldn't go that far and call him a black sheep. But it would be better for him to find steady employment for the sake of his own future. I agree that you can't watch over him forever. Exactly. But he doesn't listen to us at all. What am I supposed to do? All I can do is give up on him and let him go. Give up on him? Let him go? I'm not sure I'm following what you're implying by that. Do you plan on kicking him out of your house? Yes, that is exactly what I mean. I want him to get out. But I'm scared that he will retaliate. Or make a big scene out of it if I do kick him out. What will the neighbors think if he causes a scene on the lawn? Everyone would be able to see it. As you already know, my daughter recently got engaged. I haven't really talked to Arnold a lot, so I can't say what he's capable of doing. But he doesn't seem like that type that would cause a scene. When I brought my son over that one time, Arnold gave him snacks and even got him that new toy that's been all over the internet lately. So all I can say is that he seems like a really nice man. Of course he's nice to others, but he refuses to listen to what I have to say. He's been causing me so much trouble and stress for all these years. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm so ashamed of Arnold that I haven't even told my daughter's fiancé about him. I just can't. In fact, I don't have any intentions on telling my future son-in-law that my actual son is a deadbeat. So you're just going to pretend that Arnold doesn't exist? You're going to think badly about me, but I just wish that he was out of sight. You know, less of an eyesore. I think you might be exaggerating a bit about him. Have you tried talking to him and telling him how you feel? I worked in public relations before, so I think I might be able to find him some form of employment. Oh, yes. I think you are very well connected, Melanie. Well, I do still have a few contacts. Before you start calling them, though, I think it would benefit everyone if Arnold were to go live with you and Nick. I'm sorry, what? You want Arnold to live in our house? Yes, you guys have the space, don't you? You are renting that lovely three-bedroom apartment at the moment. So it would be no problem if he stayed with you. My son has his own room, of course. Nick and I have the master bedroom. The third room is smaller than the others. It's more of an office and library for us. We would have to do a lot of shuffling and moving if Arnold were to stay with us. The space will be too small for him, and I don't think he'll settle very well in there. Oh, it'll be fine. Nick has always looked up to his older brother, so there will be no problems if they lived with each other again. So please, let Arnold stay with you until he can stand on his own two feet. This is all so sudden... I can't make this decision on my own. I'll need to discuss it with Nick. Oh, you don't need to ask Nick. I'm positive that he will be fine with this arrangement. It will be good for your son, too. He will have another adult around to look after him. I'll get back to you once I've talked with Nick and my son about it. The three of us will have a say in this. Of course I want to talk with Arnold about this as well. Yes, of course. But really, Arnold will go anywhere if there's room. Do you know what? I even bet that he won't even leave that room. Lord knows he hasn't left his room in a long time. 
After you and Nick have talked about it, I'll be over any time to help you turn that office into a bedroom. Um, Colleen, we haven't agreed to anything yet. You're getting ahead of yourself. I want to remind you that if you say no, you're going to ruin my daughter's engagement. Are you willing to take responsibility for that? I doubt that Arnold's existence in your house will play this big of a role in another family member's future. It's already been decided that my daughter and her future husband will be staying with us. In reality, it should be Arnold's responsibility to take care of his father and I in our old age. But as you can see, we are the ones that are still taking care of him. How shameful. He is no use to us like this. Oh, I see how it is. I would be happy if you and Nick decided to move in with us. But I'm sure you wouldn't want to do that now, would you? I wouldn't say that, but Nick and I decided against living with either sets of parents. Then there is nothing else you can say. You don't want to take care of us. The least you can do for us is take Arnold in. So I think it's pretty much been decided. You have no grounds to refuse my request. Melanie, I just wanted to check in with you. How's it like living with Arnold? Has your family gotten used to him? Hi, Colleen. I must say that we got used to it pretty quickly. Quicker than I ever thought we would. My son loves his uncle. They get along very well. Well, isn't that great? You have a free babysitter. Yes, I guess I do. He does help us out a lot. How did you change your living arrangements? I heard that you shuffled your rooms around. I heard that you moved your son into the bedroom you called an office. Well, yes, we did move things around. We thought that the office room was too small for a grown man. My son is only in kindergarten. The old office is a good size for him now, so I switched the rooms around. Sorry that you had to go through all that trouble. You're doing so much for my deadbeat son. That's saying a bit much, but like I said, he's helped us out a lot. Oh, is that it? You have nothing else to say? Nothing to complain about? Is Arnold really being useful? Is he really helping out? Yes, he is. Are you saying that just to contradict what I said about him earlier? No, nothing like that at all. He helps with the housework. He also takes care of my son and takes him out sometimes. Arnold's hobbies are similar to mine and Nick, so really? We're having a good time every day. Arnold's hobbies? Ah, uh, you mean his obsession with childish things, like games and cartoons. You like that stuff too? Games and, as you put it, cartoons aren't just for children anymore. They appeal to people of all ages, and we do like those things too. We have fun talking about it and recommending shows to each other. Oh, is that so? I didn't know that other people have the same odd hobbies as Arnold does. I always thought of you as the more normal type person. Hard-working and normal hobbies. This has changed my perception of you. Anyway, everything's going well. Everyone's getting along well, so please don't worry about us. I'm happy to hear that. All you odd people getting along together under one roof. While I feel so free now that Arnold is out of the house. Like there's nothing that I need to hide. All he had to do was to leave to make this house so much brighter. I see. He became a shut-in after dropping out of college. I was worried back then. But he never left his room. He wouldn't even come down for dinner. I hardly saw him. I had to make up stories and told the neighbors that he moved far away for work reasons. It was so hard on me back then. Now I see why you said that you feel so free with him gone. I must admit, it was a bit of a shock at first when you made Arnold move in with us. But I'm glad that we're all in a place that works out well for us. Is that what you really think? Are you telling me the truth? Yes, I really do. You're really okay with living with that dead beach shut in? Aren't you repulsed by him? I mean, you're sharing your living space with him. Including a 
bathroom. In the beginning, there were a few bumps here and there, but since we were all thrown together, we've been trying to make it work. It was expected that adjustments and compromises had to be made. I can't believe that you're really okay with letting a grown man like that live with you. You really are odd. I don't understand you at all, nor do I think I ever will. You do remember that it was you who pushed all this onto us, right? It's not like I'm accepting a total stranger to move in with us. Nick and I talked this over and over until we reached common ground. So I don't think it's appropriate for you to say that to me. I'm just saying what's on my mind from an outside perspective. If it rubbed you the wrong way, then I'm sorry that you feel that. Arnold never listened to what I said. Out of all my children, my sons are such failures. I can only count on my daughter. She's the only good one. Really? She said that she will be taking care of us when we are old. So I don't think that we will be passing on any inheritance to you guys. I wasn't counting on anything. Moreover, I'm so glad that I only have three children. Your parents must be miserable. You're their only daughter. They have no one else to turn to if they want to be taken care of. My parents had already planned out their retirement and prepared everything themselves. They never thought of having to rely on me. Of course, if anything were to happen to them, I'll be by their side for sure. What would be better than to have your child live with you and take care of you in your own home? If your parents are okay with you not being around... Then fine. It's up to them. Thanks for taking care of Arnold. Please continue to do so in the future. I will never let him back into my house ever again. Could you please tell him that? Thanks. It might be hard on you, but don't forget to feed him well. Melanie! I heard that Arnold gave a new TV... And a new washing machine to his cousin? Is that true? Why didn't you tell me earlier? I need new appliances too. Really? It was something that Arnold decided on his own. Sorry. He should have asked me first when making big purchases like that. People usually consult with their parents before making big purchases like that. It's not that big of a deal. They weren't really big purchases. The TV wasn't even that big. Arnold heard his cousin moved into a new place on his own. Even if that is so, we could use a small TV. I could put it in our bedroom. Sorry. Did you buy new electronics because Arnold moved in with you? No, we're moving now. So we're starting to get rid of some things that we don't need anymore. Moving? Yes, Nick and I have always talked about living in a house, but we didn't really do anything to make it happen. But the other day, we looked on the market and found a good plot of land. We will be building a house on it. Huh? You guys are building a new house on property that you bought? Where did you get the money to do that? You quit your job to become a full-time housewife, didn't you? We've been saving for the down payment for a long time. We also got help from Arnold. What? Got help? From Arnold? Yes, he also gave us some money to help pay for everything. He insisted on giving us the money because he said that we all live together. Huh? What are you saying? How could Arnold put money down as well? I guess you never knew or cared to know, Colleen. The fact that Arnold has been working all this time. Arnold? Working... He was also just at home. You can work remotely from home nowadays. So while he was a shut-in, he was also trying out many jobs. No way. How come he never said anything about it? Arnold told me that you never listened when he tried to tell you. That's a lie. There's no way that can be true. There's no way he could work or keep a job. He proved that he could by giving us the money already. So it's all real. I want you to say this to Arnold. If he has money, he should be paying me for all the money I spent on raising him. I fed him while he was a shut-in. I provided everything for him. 
I heard that he has paid you for that. Huh? He sends $2,000 into your account for the house every month. He also said that he left food in the house, too. $2,000? Isn't that the money that my daughter has been putting in? No, that money isn't from your daughter. I think you might have misunderstood something. No way! I don't believe you! You're making this all up. Could you stop making up lies just because you're on Arnold's side? You don't have to believe me. It won't make a difference to us. There's something wrong with you. No one in the world is dumb enough to believe your stupid made-up stories. Don't try and make a fool out of me. I'm not going to waste my time listening to you anymore. Right. Well, that's perfect, since this is the last time we'll be talking. I would like that a lot. But you better come to my daughter's wedding, and don't forget to give money as your gift. Nick's salary might be low, but he works for a well-known company. I'm sure if he asks for an advance on his salary, they'll give it to him. Yeah, I'll talk to Nick about it. There's nothing to talk about. We already decided for you that you're coming to the wedding. You can do what you want after that. We can stop being a family after that. Do you know what? I'm going to stop considering you family after the wedding. I'm perfectly fine to just have my daughter and her husband with me. Melanie, I can't get a hold of Arnold. Tell him to answer my calls. I don't want to. What? Colleen, did you forget what you promised already? You were the one that swore that you would never contact him ever again. It's not about that right now. Just do what I say and tell Arnold to contact me. Tell him to come home immediately. I told him what you said. He responded by saying that he doesn't want anything to do with you. He also has no intentions to talking to you again. He said, I don't want to talk to her in this life or my next life. He can't say that to me. I'm his mother. I brought him into this life. I talked to my daughter about the money that Arnold had left. She says that it's true. Arnold was really the one that has been giving us money. My daughter knew all along, but she kept that information from me. Don't you think that my daughter's actions were cruel? Yes, I think so too. Arnold, Nick, and I were wondering how long Colette was going to keep up with the charades. Oh, Arnold. He should have told me himself a lot sooner. Like I already said to you this afternoon, if you only listened to him, you wouldn't be where you are now. But you kept looking down on him, berating him. You ruined your own family by playing favorites. But still, why did he feel that he needed to do all of that? He had the money to move out and live on his own. He was just sitting on that money all this time. Arnold isn't fussy about that. He'll be fine with staying anywhere, as long as there is a place for him to sleep. He said that he did think about moving out, but was just waiting for the right time. Huh? He actually felt relieved when you kicked him out. He felt that was around the right time. I'm sure you've realized this by now. You had no idea how much he was actually doing for you. He did all of this on purpose. He forced us into this position. He hasn't been sending the money like he has been before. With the upcoming wedding, we're really in a tight spot. The expenses for it keep piling up. We can't keep living like this. I thought we'd be fine. That the money was coming from Colette. So we had enough to pay for everything. But I never imagined that everything had been a lie. You have my condolences? Colette said that she wouldn't be paying us back. Can you believe this? She said that she needs to concentrate her money into her future instead. We're only relying on our retirement fund here. We can't pay for everything. Now do you see why that I need to have my Arnold back? I definitely see, but Arnold has already decided to cut all ties with you. He won't ever go back to you. You'd better find some other way to deal with your debts. Ah, there's no way to get through to you. Let me talk to Arnold. He has to listen to his crying mother. I've actually been acting under Arnold's instructions all along. He's helped us out so much. So when I asked if there was anything I could do for him, he said that he doesn't want to deal with you himself and asked me if I could be the one that talks to you. 
What? I represent him, so everything I say is what he wants. You knew all of this from the beginning, didn't you? You knew that Arnold had a lot of money hidden away. That's why you acted like you were fine that he moved in with you. I didn't know about the money. Not even his own brother Nick knew that he was working. We were a little shocked at first, but we talked it out and felt pity for Arnold. What is pitiful about him? We paid for him to go to a good college, but he dropped out. We are the ones that should be pitied. You told him when he was in high school that any other college than the one you chose was not worth going to. You forced him into that school. He thought you would stop bugging him after he got in, but you badgered him every day about getting into the company that, again, you chose for him. When you weren't badgering him, you were complaining about every single thing he did. I'm his parent. It's my duty to make sure that he has a good future. You're worthless. You're nothing. You never praised him. Not even once. He started to develop depression because of you. He can't blame me for that. He was just not man enough to take my advice. He can't do anything right. If he can't get anything right, then you shouldn't rely on him to solve your problems. Now who's being useless? How dare you? I don't care who you think you are, but you better watch your mouth. You're the wife of my son. Know your place. Don't you know what will happen to you if you keep insulting me like this? What will happen? Nick and I don't want anything from you. I'm going to tell everyone what a horrible wife and daughter-in-law you are. I'm going to tell all my neighbors, too. Is that it? Be my guest. The relatives and other family members can think what they want to think or believe what they want to believe. I'm never going to see your neighbors, so go ahead. Tell them about me. I won't help you when you get into trouble. We have never asked you for any sort of help whatsoever. We want to keep it that way, even in the unforeseeable future. Melanie, are you sure you're being true to your feelings? I mean, anyone would hate to have to suddenly live with a stranger. It must have been hard. You can send him back to us now. So please, I'm asking you, kindly give my Arnold back to me. It has been no trouble at all. He has been and always will be a welcomed family member in our home, so don't worry at all. You've only lived with him for a few months. We are his parents. We are his true family. You were the one that said that he isn't part of your family anymore. You even called him a black sheep. You never listened to a single word he said, and you kicked him out. Now you want him back because you want to use him for money? How can you be so selfish and cruel? I told you I didn't know. But thanks to you, we are all living well together. We can't forgive you for all the things you said and did to Arnold and to us. You're always lecturing us on positions and places in society. But you're the one that is embarrassing yourself with the way you've been acting in our society. I want to make it clear. We don't want anything to do with you from now on. Wait a minute. How are we going to survive from now on? We're going to go visit your house every day once it's been built. You can come every day if you want, but we're not letting you inside. Every day is a bit much. I don't think that would be possible. Why not? The property isn't exactly close to where you are now. We're moving quite far away. You wouldn't be able to get to us without flying. What about Nick's job? He's going to be switching jobs? Yes, he found new work with better benefits. So I don't think we'll see you again. Where are you moving to? You have to tell me! I'm going to move too! Oh, please don't do that. My husband and Arnold are relieved to finally get rid of you. We don't want you to follow us. If you guys are still building the house, why don't you add some extra rooms for us? We're too old people. You can do that for us, can't you? We don't want to live with people outside of our family. You need to take us in! Just forget about everything that has happened until this point. It's all water under the bridge now. I'll acknowledge that you, Nick, and Arnold have been right. We're fine without that. All of us have decided that we're going to cut you out of our lives. You said that you don't need anyone but your daughter and your kind son-in-law. You got what you wished for. Aren't you happy?
that day, Colleen and my father-in-law came to us begging and crying, but we turned them away. They didn't even make it to our front door before we asked them to leave. They weren't able to talk to Arnold. It seems that Colleen fights every day with Colette and her husband. Colette's lies and the reason for moving in with her parents was so that she can have the house transferred to her name. I heard that she was successful in doing so. Now Colette is trying to kick her parents out. I heard all of this from our relatives. All the fighting and strained living conditions has caused a lot of stress for Colleen already. But now she's about to lose her home at her age. She brought this on to herself, so I don't feel sorry for her. You reap what you sow, so I'm not surprised at all at how the tables have turned. Thanks to Arnold's monetary assistance, we were able to make the house bigger than we have planned. Arnold said that he can work wherever he wants, as long as he has a laptop. So he decided to travel and see the world. He also wanted to experience what it was like to live in a loving home, so that's why he decided to live with us at that time. His monetary assistance was a thank you gift for providing him with that home. He's in a different part of the world now, but we still keep in touch whenever he comes back to the States. I'll be sure to have his room ready for him when he does. I want this home to be his base. He's always welcome to come back here.